Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing how you can resolve stick drift on your DualSense Edge wireless controller. This is going to be aimed specifically on the Edge version and not the standard DualSense controller here. I've experienced quite a bit of stick drift on my DualSense Edge and I'm gonna be showcasing some tips which I promise you by the end of them, if you try all of them, will resolve your stick drift. Now, let's just start off with why stick drift happens. Quite often, if you do leave your wireless controller on a charging stand or even on your TV stand, over time, whether that's months and months or even close to a year, it might gather a lot of dust and that is going to be the most common reason why your joystick might start developing a lot of stick drift when you're playing some games. So when the dust actually starts going into the joysticks, it starts affecting the mechanical parts of the joystick itself. And there's a few solutions that you can try to help eliminate that completely. And hopefully by the end of this, this will help you get back up and running and get you back into your gameplay. So before we jump into all of the steps you can take to resolve this, let me just show you what stick drift looks like, especially for me. Now I've loaded up Call of Duty and you can see in the dead zone thresholds, I have a lot of stick drift here on the left joystick as you can see on the screen there. Now I'm not actually doing anything, you can see it's moving by itself and my gameplay just kept strafing to the left and the left joystick I tried to input the dead zone settings which is why you see a thick red border on the left side and it's very unplayable and it just makes the gameplay so hard that you just want to stop playing completely. The right joystick as you can see is perfectly fine and it works fine and it's not causing any type of stick drift and it is very stable. Now one thing you can try in your game is to adjust the dead zones. So you can go down and choose left stick, right stick, the minimum and the maximum dead zone thresholds. As you can see here, I'm just adjusting the right hand side one. If this doesn't help resolve the issue, then of course we'll just jump into the main steps on how you can prevent the joystick moving across by itself. Okay, step number one, sometimes you may have some connection problems via Bluetooth when you are using your DualSense Edge. So let's just go ahead and try to disconnect via Bluetooth and see if that helps resolve the issues. So to do this, head over to your PS5 settings and go to accessories. Then under the general tab, if you head over to Bluetooth accessories, select your DualSense Edge wireless controller and disconnect. Leave it for about a minute or two and keep it disconnected. But I would also suggest if you go down to the DualSense Edge, then go into the device software, just make sure this firmware is up to date if it isn't already. And finally, if that doesn't work, then go ahead and reset your DualSense Edge controller from this option just down at the bottom. Once it is reset, then go ahead and reconnect and see if that had helped with your stick drift. If that soft reset didn't work, let's go ahead and try a hard reset. So on the back of the controller, you'll see there is a small reset hole just there. Grab yourself a pin and put this in for about five or six seconds to reset the actual controller itself completely and then try to reconnect it back to your PlayStation 5. This itself is a very common way to resolve a lot of people's stick drift options, especially when you have just a normal DualSense controller. I've seen reviews online saying that this reset has actually worked for them. So go ahead and try that and see if that works for you. If none of those tips worked for you, then let's go ahead and try and get some of that dust that may be inside the joystick modules out of the controller. So this is very simple. If you see there's a little release toggle just at the back at the bottom. When you toggle this to the left, the front plate should pop out. So let's do that now. There we go, very easy. Now you have all of the modules just there and we're going to try and blow out some of the dust. So what I recommend is if you get a cleaning kit, then that's going to be very useful I have a couple of tools here that I actually use for my camera lens cleaning. I'll leave a link in the description for these as well. But you got a nice blower. Then you also have a cleaning dust brush as well, just to get some of the particles away from the mechanical parts. Now, to take the joystick out, you have the silver latch just there. If you lift it up, the actual joystick pops out very easily like so. Now all you need to do is blow out some of the dust from the inside of this joystick. And let's try and get some of the dust out from here. Then I also have a microfiber brush. 
you can just use that for the last small bits just to make sure there's nothing left and if you're happy with the cleaning you just slot the joystick back in push it in lock it back into place and put the faceplate back on there we go and now hopefully you got all of the dust out this should help eliminate a lot of that stick drift if not all of it so now if any of those things did not work and you still have a bit of stick drift then I would recommend to check your Sony warranty because they have a really good repair service if you go onto the website and if you've got this problem in less than a year since the time you've bought it then you can actually send it back to Sony and they would either repair it or just send you a brand new one that's probably the fastest and quickest solution if you've tried everything and nothing else is working and you're within warranty that's going to be obviously the cheapest solution without you having to either buy another controller or buy some parts or tools to actually fix it manually yourself. So make sure you go ahead and check your warranty because that is a good service that maybe a lot of people are not aware of. And last but not least, if you're out of warranty and you can't send it back or you'll have to pay a lot of money, then I would suggest you buy a replacement joystick. So the one thing I like about the DualSense Edge controllers is that they do sell the different modules that you can replace very easily including the joystick module itself this one roughly comes around 30 pounds so it's not too expensive especially in comparison to actually buying a replacement controller which is very expensive it comes in a small box and there you have another joystick so like i showed you open up via the release button at the back pop the face plate off and then just take the joystick module that's causing the problems out and put the new one in and I guarantee that that will obviously solve your problems. But if you did not try any of the dust removal, make sure you do remove the dust, you clean it and then replace it with the new one. Any of these steps you can do with like the modules at the bottom or the back pedals at the back as well. Very easy to replace because this is a modular design. And they actually made this DualSense Edge controller with the mindset of repairability so that customers can go ahead and repair any of their parts themselves without having to worry to send this over to Sony to do it for them. So these are the most common tips of how you can actually fix all of your stick drift problems. So you're probably wondering, how did I fix my stick drift problems? I tried all of the steps and nothing was working for me, but because I had this for about 10 months, I was still under warranty. So I contacted Sony, I went onto their website. There's an option on there that you can choose to book a repair. So I had to send this back to them. And I would say no more than maybe eight, nine days from me actually shipping it from my house to then receiving it back, it actually resolved the problem because what they ended up doing is sending me a brand new DualSense Edge controller instead of spending a lot of time trying to repair my one. And that is very convenient, but I know that if I had just replaced the joystick myself with this new joystick module, I reckon that would have also resolved the problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at now the problem being fixed. So I've loaded up Call of Duty again, and as you can see, those joystick dead zones are not moving whatsoever, and I'm not touching the joystick. Now you can see, I'm just playing around with the joysticks and everything is working very smooth, and I don't even need to change any of the dead zone thresholds. This has just got my gameplay back on track, and it took a while to get there, but in the end, it was worth it. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes you may face these issues, but one of these steps will guarantee that you will fix your stick drift problems and you'll get back up and running. So now let's talk about the final thing is how to maintain your controller to prevent stick drift in the future because this is a very common problem amongst Sony controllers. The DualSense Edge, one of the reasons you know they actually created this as well is to address all of the stick drift problems that users had from the original controllers. But there are still a lot of people that I've seen online having stick drift on the DualSense Edge which shouldn't be the case, but like I mentioned, with putting this into a position where it can get a lot of dust in it, one thing I would recommend doing so you don't have that problem for a very, very long time is to actually cover your charging stand with either a cloth or a plastic sheet once you finish your gaming session. Now, of course, you can charge it up, but if you do want to put it away, then either cover it up or you can also go ahead and put it into a drawer, like your TV stand drawer, so that it's less susceptible to gather a lot of dust. That is going to be you know, my advice to the majority of people that are having this problem. So hopefully you found that useful. 
and I hope this resolves your stick drift problems and you don't get any issues with your gameplay. If it does, I'd like to hear from you, drop a comment down below of your experiences with this and if you have any other comments or any other solutions you'd like to let other people know about, as always, drop that comment down below. If you like this, make sure to like, subscribe and I'll see you all at the next one.